Hello and welcome. I'm Claudia Herber for Arts Alive, and I'm here today talking to Catherine Borchert. She is an artist with many, many, many paths to her art. <laughs> so we're excited to talk to you, Catherine. Thanks. Welcome. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Good. Thank you for coming. Oh, my pleasure. So behind you, we have these beautiful framed art pieces. We're going to talk about some of your other extraordinary efforts towards uh, bookmaking. So let's start at the beginning. Okay. How did you get on this path? <laughs> well, it's a path I was not encouraged to do. Um, I majored in art in college uh -huh. at Scripps College in Claremont, California. Oh, okay. And I was uh, just in my realm there. I had always done art, but when, yeah. I, when I finally got there and walked into the art room and had great, great professors and a great experience, that's when I really took it seriously. So I majored in art against all good common sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> And then I graduated now. with a degree in studio art, and I started off with sculpture because it was inexpensive. I mean, honestly, in college, I chose the cheapest medium, <laughs> which, really? was, which was clay. Right. But it turned out that, right. that that really got me into the tactile nature of art. And everything I do now and since has been through touch, mm -hmm. textures. Mm -hmm. I, my, my favorite thing is mixed media, oh, yes. where I get to manipulate yes. surfaces, etc. Like this piece behind me, uh -huh. that's collaged. Yes. Leaves. Um, so I, I started then, I graduated in 79 from Scripps, and then I got a real job in a corporate law firm, which paid much better than what I was making as an artist. <laughs> but I hated every minute of it. Yeah. I hated it. It just it was not a good fit. Right. And I moved up here to Northern California to um, become an art teacher. After the law firm actually went bankrupt. Oh. And that was oh. my that was my cue to get out of Dodge. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so the joy, the true joy, came when I moved to Northern California. I went back to school and I got a teaching credential, and I taught art for thirty years. So oh my everything goodness. else stemmed from from that because if I didn't know anything about it, like I say in, in college, it was mostly sculpture. Right. So I had to teach right. myself how to watercolor, paint. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Calligraphy, everything that mm -hmm. I taught my students, mm -hmm. I taught myself first. Mm, that's so the best. Here I am. And here you are, here all I these am. years later. All these years later. So, yeah. and just as a thought on, on the school, what, what age group were you teaching? I taught high school, high, high school. school art, uh -huh. and uh, it, was, it was such a blessing to get up in the morning and go to work yeah. and get paid to do what I love oh, to do. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I mean, how many people can say that? Didn't pay nearly as well as working in a law firm, but it wasn't really, and never has been about money. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It was about the joy of, of teaching and creating. So. Yes. yes. So then when I saw you at Currents Gallery and asked you about <laughs> <laughs> your beautiful gourds. <laughs> we were off and running. <laughs> we were off and running because <laughs> I had just moved here to Oregon. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, I, I'm kind of going back to this, something that occurs to me mm -hmm. about um, teaching in a high school situation, especially in these days, because how long have you been retired from that? Four years. Four years. So the trend in art has been moving so much, and we have so much technical stuff going on. How did, how did that affect how your students were looking at what you wanted to give them? That is such a great question, Claudia. What I found through art, a as other teachers did through music and dance and any sort of expressive, uh -huh. was for many students, it's what kept them in school. Oh. And even though they were, 
you know, typing their papers on a computer for their English classes, and they were going to the library and doing internet searches for their history classes, etc., yes. etc. Uh -huh. When I left, it was cell phones. Yeah, sure. And so, rather than uh, push against, I learned how to incorporate technology into the classroom, because the the point of teaching is to one of the things that's important to teaching is to get people where they are, yes. right? Be yes. Be so if, if you build up a trust and you are willing, th th every teacher should also be a student, I think. Mm -hmm. You should always, always look at your teaching and say, you know, this is not me forcing my will on somebody. It's I I'm exposing students to, to something that they may not otherwise have been exposed to. So I learned technology, and they were great teachers. Oh, I bet. So I incorporated it, incorporated it in smaller ways uh -huh. in the classroom, mm -hmm. and I brought it into the lessons that mm -hmm. I was doing. Mm -hmm. But still, the making of, the process of mm -hmm. creating something with your hands, mm -hmm. your ideas, mm -hmm. um, tapping into that part of you that can express itself through, th through an idea and bring it to fruition through whatever medium. I always told them, there will be something this year that you absolutely love and you'll want to do it all year. There will be something that you hate and wish you didn't have to do it. And most things will be brand new to you and it might set you on a course that you never would have thought possible. Mm -hmm. Like this, this um, actually came from a lesson I was doing on scribble, meander drawing, scribble drawing, which is a beautiful way to draw because Every school year, the first day of school, they would say, I hope you don't expect me to draw a straight line. And I, <laughs> I, was, I was amazed to find out that there were students who had art anxiety, just like I have algebra anxiety. <laughs> and so one of the first things we did was, well, there are no straight lines in this class. We're going to start by, by scribbling or letting our pencils meander. Uh -huh. And so this came out of that particular unit on on scribble shading. Uh-huh. Yeah. I was, so. um, I, uh, we've all been admiring that and thinking about it and thinking, what was she doing there? Is that a bunny? Is that a horse? <laughs> what is that? And now that you explain it as scribbling, it's, oh my gosh, <laughs> how fun is that? And so you did, you just released all that anxiety because whatever they scribbled was perfect. Well, it, they didn't think it was perfect. They just thought it was dumb. <laughs> but then uh, they were very self-conscious. But but as you, if, scribbling is is um, what's the word? Uh, boy, the words just go around, and I have to catch them on the Oh sure, by. oh sure. Well, in some <laughs> it's ways, therapeutic. it's therapeutic. Therapeutic and releasing, yes. and um, yeah. there's no right or wrong to a scribble. It's mm -hmm. your scribble. And you learn how to shade with scribble drawing because if it's a dark area. Yeah. You put your scribbles closer together, just like yeah. if you're doing traditional shading or cross hatching. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. you want dark values closer together, lighter values further apart. Right. And right. they could get that concept easily with scribbling. So I see that. Yeah. <laughs> and it and it occurs to me that that um, kind of going back to my original thought about that is is that you're working with your hands, your brain, you're all kind of involved in whatever it is, and so those fabulous electronic devices that we live and die on are over here and they're just living and dying and we, you have us all engaged in this moment, mm -hmm. in this part of time. Thank fabulous. you. And, yeah. and I've actually done scribble drawing on programs, that, apps that my students have introduced me to. Oh, S of course, that would come. Because with an yeah. Apple Pencil, so this is about, teachers learning new uh -huh. things. I think artists should always, artists and people should always try something new, otherwise you just get stagnant, right? Exactly. So I learned how to scribble with my Apple Pencil and how to select the tools. And, oh, yeah, fun. All that, so. oh, fun. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we say that, you know, uh -huh. the teaching thing goes both ways. It does, Exactly. it does. So I asked you to bring some things because uh, you're doing a, a mag what is it called, magic book Magic mini books. Magic mini books mm -hmm. at uh, at uh, the gallery, and I was curious about, you know, all of these fabulous things you do, and and then it sort of all is, we're gonna we're gonna get to look and play with books, making books. Yes. How does that all happen? 
Well, the morning session is going to be about making your own papers oh. for the covers of the books. Okay. So we'll be doing two kinds of paper making. One, paste papers, which paste papers are made with methyl cellulose, which is a binding ingredient and gets real viscous. Uh -huh. And you, um, this is my kind of cooking. I was going to say. I'm, I'm not good in the kitchen, but <laughs> I'm really good at using all my kitchen tools at school. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, methyl cell is a binding agent, and you mix it with paint. Uh huh. And and then you use tools. You can use anything from your kitchen. You can use a toothbrush. You can use chopsticks, whatever you want. And you use tools. You mix the paint with this. Right. And this, I just, I I have a, a box full of orphan paper. Uh huh. Where I see interesting paper, I always put it in this box. Okay. So old envelopes, old greeting cards, wrapping paper, mail that you've received. This is a magazine cover that I mixed. I mixed green paint with the methyl cell. Before I came here, I think it's still in my fingernails. <laughs> and um, I just created the pattern with the paste and paint on top of sure. the magazine picture. I see that. And then this will, at my workshop, I'll use it further. This will be the, one of the covers of the, of the book. Right. And we use cardboard, small pieces um, of cardboard, and you can bring collage, anything from home if you're watching this and you would like to do this. Sure. At home, you can bring kitchen tools. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> uh, I look scary. We're going to be folding paper with a, a, a traditional bone uh -huh. uh, paper folding. But our books are going to be very small. All right. So. And, 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 and. I'm curious, um, what's, I, so we'll have these beautiful pieces of paper on the end and then, and is there something, what goes on in the middle? Is it something that ultimately I would like sketch on and use as a notebook or am I going to, are we going to do something like all together at that time? I, 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 tell me. Another great question. If you go to the Currents Gallery website and you look at the class offering, uh -huh. it'll show actual samples. I'm afraid I don't have any samples with me today, but you can use them as a little memento book and put photographs inside. So the papers are accordion folded papers oh. that oh. stretch between the covers and you can make it as long or as short as you wish. Uh -huh. And I've had students write poetry in it. People have put photographs in it. People have done painting inside of it. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a book for, for whatever treasure you want to use it for. That's yeah. how I think of it. It's like a little yeah. treasure. And I've give, given them as gifts over the years, and people love them. You can personalize it so much. Uh -huh. So there's lots of samples online. Oh. Sounds, yes. It sounds like so much fun. <laughs> it is. So no matter what my talent is, I can follow along and I can I can make this little book and then I could I could even give it to someone blank and they fill in all their treasures. What a great idea. That is a great fun. idea. Fun, fun, fun. Yes. The only thing that I would caution about is in the workshop in the afternoon when we make the books from our paper, uh -huh. you'll be using an X-Acto knife and a ruler. Uh-oh, scary stuff. Well, <laughs> most of us learned how to measure in fourth grade, how to use a ruler in fourth grade. And, uh -huh. you know, here in the States, it's inches and not yeah. Uh, yeah. the meter, uh, yeah. metric system. Yeah. So, um, so this will appeal to our logical brain. Yes, friends. it's for both okay. personalities. Oh, both and if you don't want to get messy in the morning and make your own marbling paper, I have a lot of, of origami paper. Oh, which nice. makes beautiful book covers. So if you uh -huh. if you would prefer just to stay clean and pristine, and that's your personality, please come anyway, It'll and we'll fun. have other things for you. Okay. And when is this class? This class is Saturday, August 9th. Saturday, August 9th. And, and it's in two sh sessions, 9 to 12 and 1 to 3. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, Catherine, thank you so much. You're it's been so <laughs> much fun chatting with you. You too. And thanks, everyone. It's Arts Alive. And I'm Claudia Herber. Thanks for joining us.